While everyone is obsessing over the leaked screenshots and other various pictures that people get excited about that aren't of the nude variety about the upcoming Call of Duty game, Infinity Ward is trying to get people excited about their upcoming DLC drop by dropping a trailer for the new zombies experience called Shaolin Shuffle, which is only slightly less catchy than the Sex Offender Shuffle. I guess they decided to reveal only the zombies portion of the DLC because one, that's all that people give a shit about in the season pass, since the multiplayer maps are leftovers and reskins, and two, Infinity Ward didn't want to put out yet another trailer with connection issues in it like the VPR trailer, which is embarrassing for an official video that says we can't fix our shitty connection problems. The zombies map takes place in the 1970s since they've already done the 90s and 80s, but this time in an actual place instead of a fictionalized stereotype, a gritty New York City because that worked out so well for The Division. It's too bad that one of the devs tweeted out some Morse code that translates to Welcome to Fear City, which is a movie with the same setting about a serial killer martial artist fitting the theme. However, this movie came out in 1984, not in the 70s, so much for consistency. However, given the era of disco and the theme of karate movies, it's a missed opportunity for the Carl Douglas one-hit wonder song Kung Fu Fighting because you sure as shit know that he'll like that royalty revenue from its use. Instead, we see scenes of various different types of melees prompting an old people like rant, Back in my day, we used to kill zombies with guns, as if the threat of getting bitten and infected is all of a sudden negligible. If I wanted to play a shitty beat-em-up with karate influence, I'd throw in Shaq Fu, not a Call of Duty game. Of course, as a shout-out to Earth, Wind, and Fire, there's some weird elemental beepity bop whenever a karate chop is thrust and we see some nunchucks which you all know will make its way into multiplayer supply drops at some point like the axe before it. The mains are transformed into the alpha characters, the street poet, the punk rocker, the disco chick, and whatever this mustache cop ripoff is supposed to be. As if there weren't enough afros, there's the hero character Shaolin Sister, played by Pam Grier who people will think of Jackie Brown which is Quentin Tarantino's homage to black exploitation films of yore which came out actually in the 90s. Of course, since this is a zombies experience after all. There are buildable traps and rooms dedicated to killing gaggles of zombies and a boss type character. Since it's a gritty New York City, it's based on the rat and hopefully this one won't steal your pizza, but it looks like a witch doctor even though that's a song from the 50s, not the 1970s. There are plenty of other references to the 70s though, with roller skates instead of blades, bell bottoms, disco balls, and heebie-jeebies, an obvious reference to CBGB, the punk club. Finally, we get some fucking guns, only took till nearly the end of the trailer though, and this scene basically summarizes the entire entire thing. People flailing wildly instead of actually shooting up some zombies. Continuum DLC, the perfect name for peddling the same old bullshit over and over again and still getting paid for it, is out on April 18th, first on PlayStation 4 because Activision is spelt with a dollar sign. There are the descriptions, however, of the four new, I mean three new and one reskin multiplayer maps as follows. Torista, a resort based on top of a skeleton of a giant creature, which is perfect symbolism for this game, Infinite Warfare, on top of the dead Call of Duty franchise, which is once huge. It also kind of looks like a less colorful version of Pod from Black Ops 2, an awful DLC map. Archive isn't the same as the GoldenEye 007 map of the same name. This is an art gallery, not a library, invoking visions of Raid from Black Ops 2. Might as well steal inspiration from a good map in Black Ops 2 this time, right? Scrap is set in an abandoned junkyard on the moon and basically looks like a reskin of Salvation another Modern Warfare 2 DLC map, but the actual reskin of the Modern Warfare 2 map is next with Excess, an oxymoronic name for a reskin of one of the smallest maps ever created, Rust, where you can now settle your 1v1s. Judging from the screenshot, it doesn't look like they went the Call of Duty Online route of elongating the sides, so have fun on that size map with jetpacks and sliding. In other Infinite Warfare news, there was a patch released on Friday the 31st that fixes some of the oopsies with counting, not Infinity Ward's strongest ability, for the Blood Anvil mission team challenges. The micro turret was nerfed after being buffed a few patches ago so that this way it's not more powerful than an actual score streak that you have to earn without dying the shock sentry. Lastly in the patch there are various cosmetic fixes like how rigs appeared in the menus and being able to put those sweet stretched out calling card camos you got out of supply drops on Mach 2 weapons. On to other Call of Duty news as Amazon UK trolled people regarding backwards compatibility on the Xbox One for Black Ops 2, the most requested game on the list, by adding Xbox One box art and then removing it after declaring April Fools, and by the way, I'm not actually becoming a dad. That was an April Fools' Day joke. I'm kind of bummed that people either don't read the comments nor watch till the end of my videos, but I'll get over it. Finally, Activision Blizzard has a movie studio which produced the World of Warcraft full-length film and is now ramping up for a Call of Duty movie franchise. Their vision is similar to that of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where there are multiple movies with a focus on characters. As producer Stacy Schur said, "Quote: There'll be a film that feels 
becomes more like Black Ops, the story behind the story. The Modern Warfare series looks at what it's like to fight a war with the eyes of the world on you, and maybe something that's more of a hybrid, where you're looking at private, covert operations while a public operation is going on. Yeah, too bad that contradicts the whole vision of focusing on characters, considering the settings and plot for Call of Duty games don't cross the streams in terms of different studios, so while they have Soap and Reznov in the same movie, it doesn't seem to make any fucking sense. As someone who hasn't played any of the campaigns, which storyline would you like to see in a full-length film? Let me know in the comments section. I've been the Schwanz27 out like Gonzaga. Until next time.